This is an Artline training video for suturing. We're going to start by talking about equipment. So first of all, you'll need needle drivers. Uh, either straight tip or curved are fine, whatever is your personal preference. You will need a pair of scissors and a pair of forceps. Not everybody uses them, but they're handy to have, so keep them with you. Suture materials. So you want a non-absorbable suture in a size 3.0. The sizing is at the top. Um, any material that is non-absorbable is acceptable, but strongly recommended is either a silk or an ethylon or proline would be fine. The size and shape of the needle is also a little bit personal preference, but we recommend a curved needle and either a cutting or a tapered uh, tip is acceptable. So we're going to start by loading our sutures. So when you open your package, you're going to see that the needle is accessible there. Hold your needle drivers using the fourth finger. And the reason for that is when I turn my arm, it's like turning a key, the needle tip or the needle driver tip stays in the um, correct plane. If I use my third finger, this wants to swing a big arc. Alternatively, if neither of those work for you, you can load your suture and just hold on to the drivers without using your fingers through the holes. That would also be acceptable. So I'm going to pull out my needle here. Okay. And I want to load my needle somewhere between half and two thirds of the way along the needle towards the, where the thread comes out at the end. Okay. And before I put my line in, I usually have that loaded and ready to go on my sterile field. So I'm going to hold with my fourth finger and I'm going to start on the far end of, of me here. So in terms of body position, you generally, you always want to be swagging towards yourself, never away. And it's usually best if you can have it lined up perpendicular to your body as much as possible. But if you need to be a little bit off to one side or the other, you kind of work around your environment. My needle needs to go straight down into the skin. So that should be a 90 degree angle when you enter the skin. And you're looking to grab approximately half a centimeter worth of skin. And you're gonna try and curve. It's kind of like inserting a trach. You're gonna follow the curve of the, of the needle. And if I miss my hole, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna come through, move my Heart line catheter just out of the way and then I will come back and I will go through that hole afterwards. Now I'm going to pull the thread through until I have somewhere in the neighborhood of a four to five centimeter tail. You don't want it to be too long but if you pull it too short you're at risk of pulling your suture all the way through so I like to have something that's about that long. Okay, and again, you know, your body position can vary a little bit, but it's generally easier if you can make yourself as perpendicular to that as possible so that your hands stay on the same side. Now, let's talk a little bit of needle safety. Um, if it's loose, um, there's no force behind that needle, so it's almost impossible to poke yourself, but you can be even safer than that. Leave yourself a, a good length of thread and just cut that off and then I, my needle's out of the way. Okay, let's tie our knots. So I'm gonna put my needle drivers in the middle over top of where my knot is going to be so that I have a thread coming out on each side and I'm gonna do my wraps. So for this, I'm gonna do two, one, one, and one. You can also do three, two, and one, as long as the number of um, wraps that you're doing is in descending order, okay? So I'm going to grab onto the tail and pull that through. So what I'm looking for is something that's not all twisted like this. I want to have it so that I get this nice loop. I can put my driver in here and spread it out. And what I'm looking for is having all of my twists on top. And then I'm going to pull down nice and gentle so that it's nice and even. Okay, you don't want this to be too tight. Um, we're just trying to prevent the art line catheter from coming out of the skin. So you can leave that a little bit loose. You can put your needle drivers underneath and just to make sure that you've got enough room so that when you tie your knots down, you don't end up pinching the skin. So you wanna check and make sure that 
the skin's not pinched, it's not blanching uh, once you've done your, your knots. So once again, my needle drivers are gonna go over top of my knot and I'm gonna go over top, grab the end and pull it through. And again, I want my twist to be on top. I'm gonna leave this nice and loose so that I'm not pulling it up like this. This would produce a slip knot. So I wanna make sure that I haven't now completely twisted my material. And having done that, I'm gonna pull that one out and start over. Okay, so now I've got my twists on top again. Pull that through. And now I'm gonna pull that down nice and tight. Okay, so I'm gonna check, make sure that I haven't got any blanched skin, I'm not pinching. Again, my needle drivers go over the middle. I'm gonna do one loop and pull it down and tight. And there's my last one. Again, a nice loop with the twists on top and I'm gonna pull it down and tighten. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut my suture threads and I'm gonna leave approximately half a centimeter. You just need to make sure that you're not, you're not gonna not, not gonna not unravel. Okay, and we're gonna get ready and we're gonna do the other one. So I'm gonna load my needle again. So one trick is to make sure that the needle is pointing in the same direction as your thumb so that it's not backwards. Because if it's pointing like this, I have to do a super awkward turn. So I always have my needle pointing towards my thumb. Okay, so now on the other side, this is where things can get a little bit tricky depending on what your setup is, how close the patient's arm is to their body. You may or may not be able to walk around them. If I can, I might actually get up and walk around to the other side so that I'm pulling towards myself towards the hole. But if I'm stuck on this side of the bed, I can adjust my body so that I can you know, kind of awkwardly get that in there. It takes a little bit of practice. Um, or you can, uh, depending on which catheter you're using, go through the hole and come out the other side. So in this case, I'm gonna come through the hole. Again, I'm grabbing about half a centimeter worth of skin. And I'll pull that through. Okay, and then I can, again, cut off my needle so that I'm safe. So for this side, I'll just do the three, two, one sutures. So I'm gonna do three wraps, one, two, three. And I'll pull that through. So again, you want your twists on top Tighten that down and make sure it's not kinked anywhere. Okay. And then I'm going to, again, put my needle drivers over top. And I'm going to go one, two. Oh. So again, I'm checking to make sure that I get a nice loop and I don't have kinked twists. And I do recommend that when you're using, whatever suture material you're using when you're in a training environment, that you go ahead and you pull as hard as you can on those sutures to see where the breaking point is. That's my last one. Just in the loop, and I have again a nice twist there. On that side, okay. And I'm gonna check and make sure that I don't have any holes where I can see light through them check to make sure that my skin integrity is good, and I'm gonna cut half a centimeter on the tails. Okay, so at this point now, you're gonna to wanna to clean up around the insertion site before you put your dressing on. So you can either use the 0.5% chlorhexidine uh, little swab, you can use an alcohol swab, whatever, to keep it sterile. So now we're going to dress the art line. So you can choose any adhesive transparent dressing. Um, we would recommend using the CHG Tegaderm dressings if they're available, uh, but otherwise you can use any of the Tegaderm IV adhesive dressings to secure your line. Uh, I'm going to use the small one today. So this is a Tegaderm IV Advanced. And 
And you want to make sure that the window in the dressing keeps the insertion site visible. So for this one here, I'm going to put this on here so that I can see both my sutures and the insertion site. I'm going to ease that down, pull off the paper tape, um, and you're going to connect your line and carry on.